Yeah. Hello. Okay, so what I sorry, I'm just swallowing the last of my sandwich. Uh, so what I would like to focus on today is just to give you a little bit more detail uh, about how to construct a debating speech. Um, because you guys did very, very well last week. Um, you did what I asked, uh, so I'm happy with that. But I'd just like to give you a bit more detail so we can take our speech writing abilities to the next level, uh, specifically for debates. So, I'll share my screen. And at the end of the lesson, I'm going to post these documents in your uh, Zalo group. But I just wanted a chance to go through everything with you first. So we'll start with the, with the first proposition speaker. So um, the way that I've structured these documents, and if you guys would like to get into debating uh, quite seriously, uh, you're definitely going to want to read these documents and learn all you can about structure in a good debate speech. So the way I've laid this out is we've got all of the sections that you need to make sure you cover in your speech. And then I've also included an example of a good speech according to those, according to these guidelines that we've set out. So I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to pick a few students to read these speeches. So just before we begin, okay, so we've got four of you here today. Excellent. Where's everybody else? Okay, so we'll start with the first proposition speaker. And the first thing you want is a nice strong introduction. Uh, you want to greet the audience, the opposing team and the judges. You want to clearly state the topic of the debate and you want to present your team's position on the topic. So in this case, you wanna let everybody know that you are the affirmative team. Hello, Tim. Hello, Lisa. Hello, teacher. Hello, hello, teacher. So after our introduction, we want to go on with our opening statement, and that is to provide a clear or an easy to understand and a straight to the point statement that outlines the main argument that your team will be supporting. And you want to clearly explain the importance and the relevance of the topic. Next, you'll want to go on to define any key terms or concepts that might be misunderstood or maybe people don't know what they mean because they can mean more than one thing. So you just want to clear up exactly what you mean. And then you want to give any uh, relevant background information to help the audience understand the issue better. So this is your team's chance to get the audience really agreeing with you right from the beginning. Uh, next, you wanna present about three or four main points that support your team's position on the topic. So these are, these are the arguments essentially. This is setting up your team line. Each point should be well researched and supported by evidence. Uh, that's something that I know you've heard me say a lot. Evidence is important. And next, you want to explain the reasoning behind each point and how it contributes to your team's argument. Uh, next, we have preparation for rebuttal. So this isn't actually delivering a rebuttal. 
because you or well, no one from the other team has spoken yet but you just want to anticipate and guess uh, some of the arguments that the other team might try to present and you just want to address them briefly just give just one or two sentences just to say they might say they might make this argument but here are our reasons why that argument doesn't count or isn't strong uh, we then have to show that we understand the opposing side's point of view uh, because part of a debate is to make sure that you understand both sides of the argument so you are able to argue it better. Because if you know what they're going to say and you understand it well, then that gives you way more of a chance to make their arguments look weaker. And finally, we want to summarise the main point, and that's just where you restate your, your uh, original argument and you want to reinforce the importance of your team's position and why it is the most logical, why does it make sense? And why is your side of the argument going to be better for everybody than the other side's argument? Uh, the next thing here, we've got signposting. Now signposting is a technique uh, that you can use in speeches and it just helps you to clearly label each section of your speech. Uh, and the reason that that's important is because as I was listening to a few speeches last week, I couldn't tell when one argument began, the next one, or when one argument ended, the next argument stopped. So by using this technique, by saying things like, firstly, secondly, or in conclusion, uh, it clearly separates each part of your speech and it makes it very obvious for anybody listening. Oh, we've moved on to a new argument now. Oh, okay, they're going to summarize. Oh, yep, they're going to offer some rebuttals to the other team. It just makes it really obvious for everybody. And people are lazy, so you want to make it as easy for them to follow your speech as possible. Uh, and of course, something you'll see on every, uh, in every document we look at today is time management. And this is important because obviously we have a set amount of time. We want to deliver as much information as we can. So uh, we really want to be careful with how we structure and how long we spend on an issue. Uh, teacher, uh, we, well, we just... Uh find as much information as we can uh, to fit the fit the time. Correct. So we want to avoid going over time. So we want to avoid talking for longer than we've been given, but we want to definitely speak for longer than 30 seconds or speak for longer than a minute. We want to try and use as much of that time as possible. Correct, Tim. Very good. So uh, here's an example of a good uh, first proposition speech. And oh, teacher, uh, this yes. is uh, this is the uh, is a climate change. Yes. So the topic for this example debate that will go through all of these speeches, the topic that I have chosen is for uh, climate change and renewable energy sources. So I've tried my hardest to keep all of these debates kind of running, all of these speeches going one after the other. So you'll hear some rebuttals, you'll hear some, and yeah, you'll just hear how the debate will progress through all of these speeches. So uh, I would like to ask, can I get uh, Hannah, please? And uh, by the way, Hannah, I need to review that video of the debate uh, so I can watch your argument and um, give you the feedback again. I, I did get that message. I just haven't had time yet. So Hannah, can I get you please to read? Five. Can I please get you to read the first three paragraphs 
of this speech. So everything you see on screen. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed judges and respected opponents, I stand before you today as the first speaker of the affirmative team to approve in favor of the motion that the use of renewable energy sources should be significantly increased. We firmly believe that this step is crucial in addressing the pressing challenge posed by climate change and securing a sustainable future for generations to come. Let me now present our agreement in support of this pro proposition. Firstly, it is uh, uh, undeniable that undeniable undeniable that the world is facing a climate crisis of unprecedented proportions, greenhouse gas and emissions from fossil fuels have led to rising global temperatures, extreme weather events and the loss of biodiversity by significantly increasing the use of renewable energy sources, such as solar, wind, and hydroelectric power. We can substantially reduce our carbon footprint and curb the adverse impacts of climate change. Transitioning to renewables is not only environmentally responsible, but also economic, economically advantageous as it opens doors to innovation and job creation in the rapidly expanding green energy sector. Secondly, rely, 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 reliance. reliance on finite fossil fuels poses security and geopolitical risk. Many nations are heavily dependent on fossil fuels in ports, which can lead to volatile energy prices and geopolitical tensions by harmonizing renewable energy sources that are abundantly available within our borders, we can enhance energy independence and reduce vulnerability to external energy supplies dis disruptions. This in turn fosters a more stable and secure global energy landscapes, promotion, international cooperation, and peace. Sorry, uh, I thought I'd unmuted. Tony, can I get you to finish reading uh, these last three paragraphs, please? Yes. Um, 
certainly increased use of renewable energy fuels will lead to improved public health outcomes. Fossil fuels can associate it with air pollution, with which negatively impacts risk respiratory health and ex can you have me read this the word uh, exacerbate exacerbate cardi cardiovascular cardiovascular disease by transitioning to cleaner energies alternatives we can significantly reduce air pollution levels leading to healthy community, healthier communities and lower health care costs. Additionally, renewable energy technologies are less water intensive than conventional power plants. Conversing, conserving, conserving this resource, resource and ensuring this availability for essential needs. In, anticipate, in anticipation of Count of counter arguments, we recognize that some some may claim that renewable energy fuels are not reliable or cost effective as fossil fuels. However, as advancements in technologies have significantly significantly improved the efficiency efficiencies and efficiency and are for the affordabilities of renewables. Additionally, additionally, investing in renewable energy now will lead to long-term costing savings as the cost associated with environmental degradation okay. and, cli and climate change impacts will be avoided. In conclusion, increasing the use of renewable energy source is not just an option, but a necessity in the face of the global climate crisis. By embracing clean, sustain, sustain, sustainable energy, we can safeguard our planet, strengthen energy security, and promote public health. The benefits of changing Transitioning, transitioning to renewable energy are vast and far reaching. And it is our moral and pra practical duty to take decisive action. The time to act is now. I, I urge you to support this motion to pave the way for a brighter and sustainable future. Thank you. Very well done, Tony. So the first thing you guys will notice is how very formal the language in these speeches are. So um, that's because a debate is a very formal type of conversation. So when we're writing our speeches, we want the language that we use to reflect that formality. So, um, a tip that I'll give you guys, and I'll put this in your, I'll put this in your Zalo group as well, along with these documents, is for writing formal fancy speeches like this, your three best friends will be a dictionary, a thesaurus, and Google Translate. So a dictionary is handy for if you don't understand a word that you're using, you can just look up the, look up the meaning of it. A thesaurus is uh, similar to a dictionary, but instead of giving you the meaning of words, it gives you other words you can use that mean the same thing. And Google Translate, is an amazing tool because if you set the language to English and you type the word in, uh, you can hit a little button and it will teach you how to pronounce the word. So you can learn your pronunciation as well, 
which is a great little a great little tool to be able to use. So very good reading, uh, Hannah and Tony. Thank you. So we noticed there there was lots of signposting. That's the first thing I want to point out. Uh, so in conclusion, in anticipation of counter arguments, thirdly, secondly, firstly, uh, it was very clear about what we were about to discuss. So we need to make sure that in our own debate speeches that we make sure we do the same thing. We label everything so it's super obvious to the audience what we're talking about. And after the first proposition speaker, we have the first opposition speaker. So the first opposition speaker will also introduce, uh, make an introduction, greet the audience and their opposing team and the judges. They will restate the topic of the debate and they will make sure that they're very clear about their team's position that they're against the motion. They'll go on to redefine the motion uh, in their own way. So you can actually have two, two teams arguing the same motion with completely different meanings. And uh, so you can also have the chance to highlight any misconceptions about the motion. And that means that anytime someone may not, they, they may think they know something to be true, but in fact, it's wrong. Uh, and so this just gives the opposition team a chance to uh, just restate the motion and clear anything up they want the audience to know. Next, uh, we have something called the burden of proof. So similarly to uh, a court case being defended, it's not up to the person to, uh, it's, it's not up to the person being charged with something to prove that they're innocent. It's up to the people charging them to prove that they are guilty. So similarly to that, in a debate, it's up to the proposition team to prove that they are correct. And it is up to the opposition team to find as many holes in their case and to prove them wrong. So that's actually how a debate should work. So we move into main arguments and rebuttals next. So the opposition team will present their three to four main arguments that challenge the points made by the affirmative team. They, each argument again, well researched and supported by evidence. And we should clearly explain the reasoning behind each argument and how it makes the affirmative team's case weaker. Next, we're going to come up with our counter arguments. So we want to give a different point of view that supports the negative team's position. And we want to come up with some interesting reasons and some well thought out reasons for why the audience should reject the affirmative team's point of view. Uh, we want to prepare any rebuttals. Uh, so uh, yeah, we want to prepare the rebuttals uh, for the, the affirmative team. Usually you'll try and do this ahead of time uh, to try and guess what they might say, but as well, it also comes down to listening to the affirmative team while they speak. And then you want to just quickly address these potential counter arguments to show that your team has really considered both sides of the argument. Because again, if you can argue the other side, you can also make their arguments weaker and pick them apart too. So very handy skill to have. And then finally, we want to finish with our conclusion. So to summarize your team's main arguments and you want to reiterate your team's position and tell the audience why the affirmative team has not been convincing. Why have they not done their job? That's what you wanna tell them. So I'll read this speech out and then we'll get on to the second uh, proposition speaker. So 
Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished judges and esteemed opponents, as the first speaker of the negative team, I rise to address the motion that the use of renewable energy sources should be significantly increased. While we acknowledge the importance of sustainable energy solutions, we firmly believe that the motion put forth by the affirmative team is not without its flaws. Allow me to present our arguments against the proposition. Firstly, it is essential to recognise that while renewable energy sources have their merits, they cannot entirely replace fossil fuels in the immediate future. The intermittency and unpredictability of renewable risk of renewable sources like solar and wind power pose significant challenges to energy stability. Unlike traditional power plants, which can provide a steady and reliable energy supply, renewables are subject to weather conditions and require expensive energy storage systems to mitigate fluctuations. Until we develop more efficient and cost-effective storage technologies, solely relying on renewables would risk compromising our energy grid's reliability. Secondly, the transition to renewable energy on a massive scale necessitates substantial upfront investments. While proponents of the motion argue for the long-term cost benefits, the immediate financial burden cannot be ignored. Many nations, especially developing ones, may struggle to afford the initial costs of implementing renewable infrastructure. These costs could lead to higher energy prices for consumers, potentially burdening low-income households and hampering economic growth. In contrast, fossil fuels offer a more affordable and accessible energy option, particularly for regions heavily reliant on coal or oil. Furthermore, increasing the, the use of renewable energy sources can have unintended environmental consequences. The production and disposal of renewable energy technologies, such as solar panels and wind turbines, involve the use of rare metals and chemicals that can harm ecosystems. Additionally, large scale wind and solar projects can lead to habitat disruption and land use conflicts. As we advocate for sustainability, it is essential to consider the full environmental impact of our energy choices, not just in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. Lastly, the pursuit of renewable energy should not overshadow the need to invest in clean technologies that complement existing energy. Advances in clean coal and natural gas technologies combined with carbon capture and storage show promising potential to reduce emissions while maintaining energy reliability. Neglecting these transitional technologies could hinder our ability to effectively address climate change while we wait for renewable energy to reach its full potential. In conclusion, we, the negative team, recognize the significance of renewable energy sources in the global fight against climate change. However, we firmly contend that a hasty and exclusive push towards renewables may have adverse effects on energy reliability, economic growth, and the environment. Our stance is not to dismiss the importance of renewables, but to advocate for a more balanced approach. One that integrates cleaner technologies and considers the practical challenges we face in the present. We urge you to reject the motion and consider a more comprehensive and sustainable energy strategy. Okay, so, excuse me. One of the important things that I want you to notice in the opposition speeches is that they say a lot of, uh, that they use the word acknowledge a lot. Let me find an example. Oh, they say acknowledge or recognize. So the important thing is to, for the, for the negative team, is that you need to acknowledge 
the arguments being made by the proposition team, but then you need to give a better reason why they're wrong because not every art wall, I don't think there's a single argument on this planet that is 100% right and the other side is 100% wrong. There's always going to be parts of each side that's right and parts of, parts of each side that are wrong. So you need to make sure that you point out that, yeah, they have a good idea here, but here's a better idea that shows why that idea is not so good. So that's a very important part of debating as the opposition to make sure you weaken your opponent's case. Next, we have the second proposition speaker. So once again, we wanna start with a nice strong introduction. And the difference this time is you wanna to, uh, want to summarize the arguments presented by the first speaker of your team. You then want to uh, provide additional evidence and examples or statistics to strengthen your team's position. So that's what we talked about as part of a team argument. It's not just three individuals who happen to be on the same side of the argument. It's three team members working together to build a stronger and stronger case with more evidence and more facts. And finally, you want to clarify any points that may have been challenged by the negative team in the previous speech. So, any counter arguments they've had, now's your chance to set the point right and go, no, no, we, we didn't mean this, we actually meant this, and make your case stronger again. So you want to address your counter arguments. Uh, so again, respond to the counter arguments raised by the first speaker. If you want to refute their points with reasoned arguments and supporting evidence. So again, evidence, evidence, evidence. And then you want to show the flaws in the negative team's reasoning, and you want to try and take back control of the debate and show that your team's argument is stronger. You then want to present some new evidence and examples. Uh, so again, keep strengthening your team's case. And something different this time, you want to explain why it's important or what do what does the audience stand to gain if they believe in your side of the argument so what what are the good things that you're arguing for you also want to again highlight the potential benefits of what can they get out of listening what can they get out of agreeing with you and going along with what you're suggesting and again you want to emphasize the positive impact that your side of the debate can have. Again, we want to prepare for more, uh, prepare for more rebuttals from the opposition team. So we want to con uh, consider more arguments that they may use against us and try and shut them down before they have the chance to make those arguments. Uh, we then want to finish off with our conclusion. So summarize the key points made in the speech. Just once again, remind the audience what side of the debate you're on and why it's important that they believe you. And then of course, encourage the audience and the judges to support your team's position. So can I please have Tim this time? Oh, what is that? Okay, so can I get you please, Tim, to read, let me get it up here. Well, I read the, uh, the, I read what? So what's on the screen here? So one, two, three, and then the fourth one below it. So I'll scroll down as you get to it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, respected ju ju judges and worthy opponents, as the second speaker of the affirmative team, 
I stand proudly to what's this? Um, uh, what reiterate, uh, reiterate, and further strengthen our case in favor of the motion that the use of uh, what's this? Renewable. Uh, the use of renewable energy sources should be significantly should be significantly increasing. Recapping the arguments put forth by our first speaker, we firmly uh, what's this establish. Uh, we firmly establish that the world faces an urgent climate crisis that uh, uh, demands demands immediate action. Uh, what is this? Renewable. Uh, renewable energy sources offer a viable solution to, uh, to mitigate Many mitigate the impact of climate change and transition towards a sustainable sustainable future. Allow me to reinforce, reinforce reinforce our key arguments and respond to the counter arguments presented by the negative team. Firstly, our uh, reliance reliance on fossil fuels uh, perpetuates what what perpetuates perpetuates carbon emissions and uh, exacerbates exacerbates global warming. The evidence is clear and uh, undeniable undeniable greenhouse gas emissions are causing uh, irreparable irreparable harm to our planet increasing the use of renewable energy sources such as solar wind and hydro uh, hydroelectric power uh, will significantly significantly reduce carbon emissions and combat the dire uh, consequences consequences of climate change we must uh, uh, prioritize prioritize the health of our environment and future uh, uh, generations generations over the short term uh, convenience, convenience. Of, convenience of fossil fuels. In response to the negative teens claim that revivables are unreliable and uh, unreliable, we uh, acknowledge. We acknowledge that well intermittent energy generation can Post challenges, uh, advancements, advancements, advancements in energy storage technologies are rapidly addressing this con 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 concern. Concern, innovations like GERD scale batteries and pumped hydro storage enhance. Enhance the stability, uh, stability and reliability. Uh, reliability of a ren what's this? renewable renewable energy supply, ensuring a cons consistent power source for all our energy needs. Moreover, girl, girl, uh modernization and smarter energy management systems enable us to 
uh, efficiently efficiently in integrate renewables to our existing energy infrastructure very good tim now um don't get don't get disheartened or uh, don't don't feel bad about all of those words you didn't understand you didn't know how to pronounce because like i said at the beginning a debate is a very formal type of conversation so it's important that you start exposing yourself to this kind of this kind of english uh, and that's why i mentioned before that a uh, a dictionary a thesaurus and google translate will become your best friend for this formal kind of English because you'll really expand your vocabularies and you will you will become really amazing speakers uh, going about it this way. So very well done, Tim. That was a very good effort, very good effort. And now can I please have Lisa to finish the speech off, you'll have these three paragraphs plus the conclusion at the end. So whenever you're ready, Lisa, from the word secondly. Okay, we'll try someone else then. Uh, Cammy, can I get you please to finish this speech? Yes. Thank you. Secondly, the final thing. What? Financial. The financial investments required to transition to renewable energy is an investment in our future yes the entire costs can initial. be initial costs can be signed significant significant but the long-term benefits far outweigh them studies consistently show that the economic advantages of renewable energy adoption such as reduced health care costs job creation and energy savings offsets the upfront expenses we must recognize the economic opportunities opportunities in inherent inherent in renewable technologies and size the chance to be at the forefront of the green energy revolution addressing the negative teams concern about rail metals used in renewable technology production we acknowledge that reasonable responsible responsible sourcing, sourcing. Yep. and recycling practices are essential however we must not overlook the serve environmental severe. severe environmental degradation caused by fossil fuel extraction oil spills deforestation deforestation and air pollution are just a few examples of the devastating consequences our current energy sources embracing renewables is a step toward 
cleaner production and a more sustainable world. Lastly, we appreciate appreciate the importance of trans transitioning very good technologies but we cannot afford to delay decisive decisive action very good while advancements in clean coal and natural gas are valuable 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 they still contri contribute to greenhouse gas emissions we must prioritize prioritize a rapid transition to renewable energy sources while exploring ways to make these traditional technologies cleaner and more efficient very good and last paragraph please in conclusion the affirmative team firmly believes that significantly significantly, significantly increasing the use of renewable energy sources is not just a matter of choice it is an obligation to safeguard our planet and future generations. The time for decisive action is now. By embracing renewable energy, we can combat climate change and enhance, enhance energy reliability creates economic opportunities opportunities and protect our environments we urge urge we, we urge the audience and esteemed esteemed judges to support the informative team's position and pave the way for a brighter and sustainable future. Thank you. Very well done, Cami. Thank you very much. So, um, what, for a group of kids that haven't really seen much uh, very formal English before, you guys are reading this exceptionally well. Like, I really want you guys to feel good uh, about how you're doing with this because a lot of these words they're not easy to pronounce and you're doing super well so next we move on to our second opposition speaker so once more uh, we have the introduction we're going to greet the audience judges and acknowledge the, the opponents we're going to remind everybody of the motion and our team's position and we're gonna provide a brief summary of the arguments presented by the first member of our team. We also want to reinforce and expand our team's arguments. So remind everybody of the main arguments made, provide more evidence uh, to make our team's arguments stronger. And we want to just clear up any misunderstanding about any of the points that have been made and just make sure that, uh, yeah, so and anything that the affirmative team has challenged, we just want to set the facts right. Then we want to go on and address the affirmative team's argument. Um, we want to offer reasons and we want to argue back and prove wrong uh, any arguments that they've made and offer more evidence against them to prove um, the weaknesses in their cases. And then we wanna highlight any inconsistencies or lack of evidence to affirm the team's case. 
So an inconsistency is just something that just doesn't quite make sense. So any, any little hole that you can find in the proposition team's case, find it, grab onto it, and try and tear it open so you can make their case weaker. Uh, next, we want to add some new evidence and some examples. So we'll introduce some new evidence uh, to make our team's case stronger. We're going to make sure that, of course, that the evidence is credible and that it's relevant to the debate topic. So make sure that it comes from, of course, somebody that people are going to believe and make sure, of course, that it has something to do with the topic. We're going to connect that new evidence to the existing arguments, again, just to make our case stronger and stronger. Next, we want to talk about the impact and the significance. So we want to make sure that any potential consequences of accepting the affirmative team's position are known. So what are some of the bad things that they've not told us about this topic? We want to bring those up to make people not want to believe them. Uh, we want to bring attention to any challenges and again, any consequences that may arise from uh, their solutions. So what have they suggested that we do to fix this problem? And what are some of the problems that can happen because of those solutions? And finally, we want to bring attention to any risks or uncertainties associated with believing their motion. So what are the things we don't know about that we should consider? And what are the risks? What are the things that could go wrong? Uh, we want to prepare for rebuttal. So we want to, again, anticipate any arguments that their next or that their, their second speaker may have made. And we want to present those. Um, and yet we want to present our own counter arguments to try and cancel those out. Uh, and then, of course, we want to uh, finish with the conclusion and just summarize everything we've talked about. Remind the audience uh, yeah, what, yes. There are only six minutes. Yes. So we'll finish off with this speech and then I'll post the, I'll post the other two documents in your, uh, in your Zalo group. And then you guys will just uh, read them and uh, read about what a good, uh, third speech should sound like. So, uh, uh, and I'll the also. Speech is a, the third, third speech is a, a proposition, a, a opposition. Uh, both. So you'll hear about, how, so you'll read about how to sum up both teams' cases. Okay, so I'll deliver this last speech because uh, I reckon I can get through it in five minutes. So, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed judges and honourable opponents, as the second speaker of the negative team, I rise to reinforce our position against the motion that the use of renewable energy sources should be significantly increased. Recapping the arguments presented by our first speaker, <clears throat> We have emphasized the practical challenges that, and potential drawbacks of solely relying on renewable energy sources. We firstly contend, or we firmly contend, that while renewable energy is a vital component of our energy future, it cannot be the sole solution to address the complex global energy needs. Allow me to further strengthen our case and address the arguments put forth by the affirmative team. The affirmative team asserts that increasing the use of renewable energy will significantly reduce carbon emissions and combat climate change. While we share the common goal of environmental sustainability, we believe that an exclusive focus on renewables overlooks the broader picture. Transitioning away from fossil fuels, 
requires a balanced approach that considers all available options, including cleaner technologies like natural gas and nuclear energy. By combining a diverse range of energy sources, we can achieve greater emissions reductions without jeopardizing energy security. In response to the affirmative team's claims that renewable energy technologies are becoming more reliable, we acknowledge the progress made in this field. However, it is crucial to recognize that challenges still persist, especially in the context of large scale energy demand. The intermittent nature of renewables requires significant investments in energy storage and grid infrastructure. These costs are often overlooked and constrain national budgets, potentially leading to higher energy prices for consumers. Furthermore, the affirmative team argues that renewable energy will lead to job creation and economic growth. While it is true that the renewable energy sector has seen growth, we must also consider the potential negative impact on traditional energy industries. Heavy reliance on renewables could lead to job losses in the fossil fuel dependent regions, affecting livelihoods and communities. We must strike a balance between embracing clean energy and supporting the transition of workers in affected industries. Addressing the affirmative team's concern about environmental consequences, we acknowledge the importance of responsible energy production. However, the assertion that renewables are entirely free of environmental impact is misleading. The production and, disposable of, and disposal of renewable technologies also generate waste and utilize resources that require careful management and consideration. In conclusion, the negative team firmly believes that a balanced energy strategy is necessary to address our global energy challenges. While renewable energy is a critical component of the future, it cannot be implemented in isolation. We must carefully weigh the benefits and drawbacks of all available energy sources and promote an inclusive approach that ensures a stable, reliable and sustainable energy future. We urge the audience and esteemed judges to reject the motion and support our comprehensive energy vision. Thank you. So we've seen there four good examples of debate speeches and I'll post all six of those documents in your Zalo group after my next class. And uh, we're also going to schedule our next class debate for next Tuesday. So you'll have a week to prepare. I'll post your, your topics and your teams this evening. So thank Jason, you very much for your attention. Uh, yes. What is the homework? The homework will be to prepare for your next debate next Tuesday. Uh, the topic so, is, the, is, the, is the fossil fuel. Uh, no, that was just my example topic for these speeches. Um, but I will post the topic in your Zalo group tonight uh, along with these documents. So what I want you guys to focus on for this debate is trying your hardest to write your speeches similarly to how the, uh, the speeches we were reading today. So I want you to focus on the different things you need to consider and really communicating with your team so that you can build a strong argument and a strong case. Uh, so Ben's so Ben's class, I'll post all the information you need uh, tonight. Hannah, I still remember I need to give you, uh, give you that feedback from your last debate again. Uh, and other than that, I'll see you guys on Thursday. Goodbye. Bye, guys. Thank you for a good class. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, teacher. Bye, teacher. Goodbye, everybody. Hi, teacher Michael. Hello, everyone. How are we today? Um, Hi, I teacher.
time very well. Okay, so uh, apparently some of the kids will be uh, join the class a little bit late today. So um, are there any questions about the material that we've covered so far? Any questions about your last debate? Anything you guys would like to ask while we wait for uh, the rest of your class to join? Hey, teacher. So the last debate, the, who is the winner, the proposition team or the opposition team? 